Hey everyone, today I'm looking at a CCC 11 round 2 game where both sides have 30 minutes on the clock with 5 second increment and I'm going to be looking at a Stockfish game versus Leela Chess Zero, uh, the latest one, the T60 Net. So this is uh, the latest development version. I'll post a link to the game in the description below and also copy the game there as well and you could probably copy and paste that into chess base if you wish. So the game began with Stockfish as white, Leela Chess Zero as black. Stockfish played d4 and d5, uh, c4, c6 and knight to f3, knight to f6. So this is just the book so far. So e3 from Stockfish, bishop f5 from black, knight c3, e6 and knight h4, bishop to g4, queen to b3, attacking the pawn and queen c7. And this is the end of the opening book and we're into a Slav defence. So the first move that Stockfish played out of the book was h3. So hitting the bishop on g4. The only square backwards is bishop h5 and here Stockfish decided to deviate from the standard move. The standard move here is g4 and black plays bishop to g6. Whereupon white captures, black recaptures, and white plays bishop g2. And the main move now for black is knight bd7, followed by bishop d2. Knight to b6, takes, takes, and white usually castles queenside in this position. So this is the sort of main moves that human players play. But after bishop h5, again Stockfish deviated slightly, played bishop to d2, and Leela played knight b to d7. Um, but now Stockfish does play g4, so it sort of transposes ever so slightly because Leela plays bishop g6, Stockfish captures, the pawn captures, but instead of capturing on d5, Stockfish plays g5, attacking the knight on f6. Um, this move is quite troublesome for black because black doesn't really want to put their knight on h7 or g8. Putting it on either one of these squares would be really bad and really cramped for black's position. So Leela comes up with a good series of moves. So Leela takes on c4 first, so an intermezzo move attacking the queen on b3. White takes on c4, and now black can play knight to d5, putting the knight in a really strong square and away from this g5 pawn. Stockfish played h4 to support the g5 pawn, and Leela took on c3 with the knight, and Stockfish recaptured the knight on c3. So, so far it's a very tight and interesting game. And what Stockfish has done is put all their pawns on dark squares. Um, and this really weakens Black's bishop and gives it no scope whatsoever. So pretty much white is dominating the dark squares most definitely. And is going to use the bishop and queen to dominate the light squares. So for this reason, Leela plays b5, attacking the bishop on c4. And Stockfish drops her bishop back to e2, and Lila plays knight to b6 to try and get into maybe c4 or d5. Now here Stockfish played king f1, but I was thinking maybe f4 may have been also a good move, just putting all their pawns on dark squares once again. If black played bishop e7, maybe king f2 is an option. And it's really hard to decide what black can do in this position. I'm not really sure what black's plan should be. Maybe rook to b8, but then white can play rook a b1. And yeah, it's going to be very solid for both sides and really hard to break down. So it'll be very interesting to see how both sides would have um, tried to win this game from this position. But still, in even, even in this position, it's going to be very hard for both sides. So Stockfish started with king f1. Lily develops with bishop e7, and Stockfish played king to g2. This manoeuvre may look a bit weird, but the king actually is really safe on this square. Um, and it just connects the rooks up now, so makes white's position even more solid. Leela actually solidifies her own position with a6, supporting this b5 pawn. And Stockfish played rook a to b1. Leela played rook c8, maybe preparing a c5 push at some point, followed by maybe even c4. So this is black's plan. So what would happen if white played c4 first? Well if c4 then black maybe follow up with takes. The bishop takes, the pawn takes, and the queen takes. Um, and black can now probably play c5. So if we take, black will castle and win this pawn on c5 at a later date. Uh, there's no way to actually support this pawn. Even if we play, let's say, rook c1, black can just take and play either bishop d6 or bishop b6 a move later. 
Instead, Stockfish actually recommends c6 as the best move in this position, but even so, Leela will take. It'll be an exchange of queens and an exchange of rooks, followed by rook d8, bishop e1, f6, and a4. And this is a very drawish endgame. And it's going to be very hard for both sides to try and win this position. However, I was really surprised by Stockfish's next move. So Stockfish actually amazingly sacrificed a pawn in this position by playing the move a4 and giving up the a-pawn. So why have they done this? Well, if the b-pawn takes the a-pawn, then black structure is really messy. So pretty much black is forced to take with the knights, which is what happened in the game. And now Stockfish played the move c4. And this stops black from now taking on c4. It forces black to go backwards with the knight, which goes back to b6. And Stockfish now puts their bishop, their worst bishop, on a nice square. So bishop a5 pins the knight on b6 and threatens a move c5 where white will try and win a piece. And it also keeps this bishop outside of white's pawn chain. So it makes a logical decision there from Stockfish to give up the pawn. Queen a7 is pretty much forced by black. And now c5 hitting the knight. And the knight is forced to move two knights to d5. So even though whites are pawned down, whites got a very nice structure to their position. Stockfish followed up with queen to d3, so still keeping control of the light squares and the centre, but also controlling the dark squares with the pawns and this bishop poking in at the side of the board. If white manages to pull off e4 at some point, then this bishop on a5 could even jump into b6 if it wishes. Of course, e4 straight away isn't possible due to knight to f4 with a nice fork against the king and queen. So, we'll see what happens next. I thought maybe black should play bishop to d8 here and try and trade. But I think white just ignores this with bishop to d2, and now they are threatening to play e4 because this bishop covers the f4 square. So, after a5, let's say, e4, knight to b4, queen to c3, preparing moves like d5, hitting the g7 pawn. If rook g8, white plays h5, and suddenly white's a pawn down, but has now a nice attack against the black king. Because if takes, the fellow's bishop takes. After queen e7, white can play g6 and really start annoying black's structure. If takes, as bishop takes with check, king to d7, and white can consolidate with moves like rook, rook h5 and prepare d5 and even queen to g3. For instance, if king c7 here, Stockfish could play d5. After takes, 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 there's a nice move, rook takes d5. And if c takes d5, there's queen takes a5, check. And white's sacrificed a lot, but should have a winning mating attack now. So there are resources for white's position. So after queen to d3, Leela played queen to b8 though. And Stockfish does what happened in the analysis, plays bishop to d2, so just controlling this f4 square inadvertently, preparing move e4 perhaps. Leela plays queen to c7 and rook a1 from Stockfish, makes sense, attacking this pawn on a6. Leela defends with the rook, and now Stockfish plays f4. So look at this nice pawn chain that Stockfish has got, all the pawns are on dark squares, the bishop on e7 is really severely limited by this, and even the queen on c7 is somewhat as well. Stockfish's bishop has tremendous scope in the white squares, and also the queen on d3 controls a lot of white squares as well. So even though white is a pawn down, their structure is superior to black's at this point. Leela continued with a5, and now my own version of Stockfish actually recommended the move h5 here. Attacking black's position again, so attacking this g6 pawn twice. If black takes, bishop takes, and then g6. But amazingly, white can take this with bishop takes g6, because the h8 rook is now hit. But things get a bit complicated, so the rook captures h1, rook retakes, f takes g6, queen takes g6 with check, king to d7. Um, so now what is white to do? Well, they can play rook h6. White is a piece down, but they're hitting a lot of pawns. So after rook e8, queen takes e6, check king d8, takes another pawn on c6, takes, takes, king d7, rook a6. 
and they're going to win another pawn on a5. So black can play b4 and then rook takes a5. So it looks as though white is winning this position. They have a massive pawn superiority, so four pawns for a piece. And with careful play, I think white should win this. I think if this was a human player versus a human player, I prefer to take white probably 90% of the time in this position. So h5 was definitely potential for white in this position, but Stockfish opted for king to g3 instead. Leela played bishop to d8. So the king supports the f4 pawn, and now they can play e4, hitting and driving this knight back. And it's not got a lot of squares. For instance, knight b4, white can just take on b4, and the rook pawn is pinned so this can't be played so knight to e7 was played by Leela the only move and now Stockfish does indeed play h5 so after takes the bishop takes instead of playing g6 like we saw so if g6 white can play bishop f3 because the knight on e7 supports this g6 pawn so they can't sack on it this time but after takes on h1 takes king d7 White can play moves like d5, and if e takes d5, they have nice little pokey moves like bishop to g4, and black's actually lost this position. So the white squares are very important. In the game, though, after bishop h5, black played rook to g8, so not trying to trade on the h file. But now Stockfish plows in with d5, preparing d6. Black is forced to capture this. e takes d5 is played. And black has two options, either taking with the knight or the pawn. If knight takes, then white will play g6. And if f6, they can play rook a1. And this knight is now attacked by the queen because the pawn on e6 is pinned. If king to d7, there's an amazing sack. Rook takes e6. If king takes, there's rook e1. King to d7 and queen takes d5. Uh, with a freeway fork very nice and white should win this position now in the game Leela opted for e takes d5 but stockfish has the same plan of just pinning this knight against the king and the queen now attacks his d5 pawn Leela takes on c5 to defend the pawn and defend the b5 pawn but stockfish can continue their attack with g6 so this is an amazing game because stockfish has actually sacrificed three pawns in this game already so that's equivalent to a whole piece. But their attack is just so strong. So I think the three pawns are worth it because this bishop on d8 is terrible and this rook on g8 is also terrible. And the king is actually really susceptible now to an attack on one of these open files. In the game, Leela played king to f8 to try and hide away. But now g takes f7. So Stockfish gets a pawn back and attacks the g8 rook. So it's forced to move. Stockfish attacks the queen with the rook and that's also forced to move backwards. So how does white continue the attack? Well Stockfish now just literally throws every, the kitchen sink at the king, plays f5, preparing f6 and just trying to blow black's position wide open. Leela tries to defend with rook a6 but now Stockfish gets their other piece into the attack, bishop g5 and Leela plays g6 to try and defend everything but now comes an amazing move f6, so hitting this knight on e7, and there's no way that um, black can take this bishop because then just f takes e7, followed by bishop takes. And there's moves like rook c8 with check, followed by king takes f7, and then something like rook takes h8 should be winning for white. So after f6, Leela played knight to f5 with check. The king just jumps back, and there's no other checks, so black plays d4 to try and open the white squares up. And now queen to a3 from Stockfish, and this is a very nice move. If black played b4 to, to um, block this, white can play queen a4, threatening mate on e8. If king takes f7, there's queen d7 check, followed by mate swiftly with bishop e7. F takes e7, knight to e3, bishop takes, and e8 check is threatened. Um, and this is good knight for black. So after queen a3 check, 
Lula took on f7, and now bishop to f3, preparing bishop d5 check. So white still has definite control over these white squares. And also, the rook on h1 is now just opened up. Lila plays check. The bishop takes on e3. And if the pawn recaptured, then bishop d5 check just wins after king takes f6, queen c3, king e7, queen e5. King d7 and white will finish off with rook takes h8. Uh, and this would be a very nice win. So after the bishop takes the knight, black played queen takes f6. And now white plays rook takes h8, queen takes h8, followed by queen to b3 check. The rook blocks and white played rook c6. So two pieces hitting this rook on e6. The queen defends. And now rook takes e6, queen takes e6. And what do you think white's next move would be? Well, if you spotted bishop to d5, you'll be correct. Stockfish played bishop d5, pinning the queen against the king. Leela tried a4, but then bishop takes e6 with check, king g7, bishop takes d4 check, king h6, and queen e3 with check. The king goes back to h7, and Stockfish finishes this off with queen h3, bishop h4, queen takes h4 is checkmate. So this was a very nice game by Stockfish. Very similar in the style to Alpha Zero, just sacrificing a lot of material to finish the attack. I, I like this game tremendously. So to my eye in this position, it looked as though Black was doing fine. In fact, Black's got so much more material. But amazingly, White is just absolutely crushing this game at this moment in time. And after G6, King F8 takes... White's position is uh, vastly superior. I think it's due to the control of the white squares. It's very hard as a human to try and assess these type of positions because, quite frankly, I don't see where the attack is coming from for white. But the computers realise the resources are there. Because even after rook c1 and the, this series of moves, I would think it's going to be very hard for white to try and win this game. But amazingly, after bishop g5 and then a move like g6 and f6, the resources just work in white's favour. Because, um, as you'll see, we saw a knight to f5, king g2. And it just seems as though, after this move, queen a3, black just disintegrates amazingly. King takes f7, as we saw, is forced, and then just comes bishop f3. And it was just control domination of the white squares that won Stockfish the game, it seems. So yeah, this is just a really nice play. And at this particular moment, after queen b3, the rook e6 was played... This is game over now, and yet yeah, bishop d5 pretty much finishes that off. But anyway, I'll post the link in the description below, and I'll also copy my analysis into there, so you can copy it into chess base or something. And I hope you did enjoy my quick analysis of this game. If you think I missed something, please leave a comment, and I'll probably reply to you and try and get back to you. Anyway, please like, subscribe, and share. And even hit the notification button, because I'll do a lot more of these videos soon. See you next time.